scuttle out of the city and home to their tellies. But a significant part of Dunedin is going home to their music that makes this city funky Dunedin. We were the first sort of post-punk um, band from Dunedin to do original stuff. And um, we relied heavily on musical ineptitude, um, enthusiasm, speed, as in motion rather than drugs, and um, sort of grossness. The enemy may have been gross, but they were influential, locally, then nationally. The band initiated the prolific growth of music that was considered to be underground and was subsequently labelled the Dunedin Sound. As a, as a reaction to what was going on then, um, we brought along some a new, new idea, or not new ideas, but we sort of were contradicting what else was happening. But I think that we put a bit of time into having a little bit of a light show and, and PA and trying to get production sounding quite good, which really wasn't a concern of many of the other bands that were around at the time. A hot summer now They're big nationally, but the netherworld dancing toys aren't considered to be part of that so-called Dunedin sound. But the netherworld boys are from the consistently creative core of Dunedin musicians that's more concentrated here than anywhere else in the country. While part of New Zealand has gone towards the, that, the max hit pop sound, which is obviously you know, the overseas style, the, the latest haircut, the, the latest pair of jeans, Dunedin has steadfastly kept to that style of music which most of us got into rock and roll with, that the Velvet Underground, the Beatles, that the pure end of rock and roll, which has always been slightly left of centre, possibly slightly more intellectual. Light on the table, right before my very two little eyes. Dunedin's Mother Goose leapt into the international music market in the 70s. They were one of the first bands to be brave enough to present a very original product, but also to record it. Back then it was virtually impossible to make a recording. What's it all about? Sales tax. Sales tax. Sales tax. It's the 40% uh, it's crippling on the old industry actually. Is it? Yes. Uh, if you're good enough, you'll overcome it, guarantee it. The knobs appeared at the end of the 70s with the hit Culture. They made about four records. Danny Fay, I know him. Had you heard of the song? This song? Yeah. No, I haven't. I've heard of the word. Culture. <laughs> Time, the enemy was emerging, later to become Toy Love. This band was the catalyst. A Christchurch label, Flying Nun, was then launched. It's since promoted and consequently strengthened this so called Dunedin sound by recording such bands as Dunedin's A Clean. The Berlains. Things great, but that makes it neat. And the Chills. Flying Nun's biggest success. The Chills album, Kaleidoscope World, keeps selling out in Britain. A few of the people in the early days, like Chris Knox, had a strong enough you know, feel and vision that led the others on and that to believe that there was enough of an individual style going on down there. And I think also that accompanied with a little bit of isolation. The isolation of Dunedin means that you do evolve pretty naturally a very idiosyncratic approach to the music that you're playing. 
Um, there's not many influences. It's not a very trendy place, so you don't have to um, uh, you don't have to channel your music to a particular audience or whatever. Um, there's not much chance of any financial success in Dunedin, so you don't worry about that. You just worry about the songs and how to do them best and cheapest. It's the weather, the cold, the fact that you can't go out um, go out yachting or anything like that really because it's too cold. So you, you end up staying inside maybe in your bedroom writing songs. Um, and I think once also once it sort of starts going, once you do get a healthy music scene, it just keeps growing, which is great. But there is a different kind of energy and to an extent a different kind of music that comes out of Dunedin. You can see it and hear it on the streets like this guy Luke Hurley, a busker who may be the only one in the country with his very own recording label. But too many of Dunedin's best have had to get out like Chris Knox. It was a very limited audience. We were playing to the same two or three hundred people over and over again. And we'd read and rip it up about all these great punk bands up north like Get Smart and the Scavengers and Suburban Reptiles and so forth. So he came up here all fired up to, to join in with this whole stuff and found out that most of them were pretty bland, really doing mostly cover versions. And um, that Auckland had a scene that was probably even smaller than Dunedin. He's a dark and lanky institution in Dunedin music, but Jim Taylor and his guitar are here to stay. Dunedin was a small city. There's always something else. I mean, I've been to Australia, I've lived in Melbourne, worked through Sydney and places like that. It's very relaxed, I think that's what sums it up too, it's very relaxed. And even between the players and the individual bands or whatever, there's quite a relaxed relationship. And the musicians all get together, whether it be out of frustration, because it is a small city, or it's fun or whatever, and bang away in their garages and off they go. You have this unique sort of blend of players and music, probably because of that. So it's almost a frustration thing more than anything. That's what I feel about the music scene anyway, the industry, so to speak. But isn't that frustration of their own making? I mean, surely those musicians could do something about it. Well, I think they are. Why, hello, Buddy Fontana. She purred to the man who opened the door and slid in beside her. Bad Bananas is doing something about it. It's poetry with music. She traced the route on a screen with her long fingernail and the car drove itself. I started um, recording my poetry at Strawberry Sun not long ago and met Ali and Jim there and asked them to help me, and they did. And uh, we just carried on from there, really. It wasn't a conscious thing. I didn't suddenly think that my poetry needed music or anything like that. It's something else. It's a growth out of what I've been doing. Do you think Dunedin has made it easier for you three to, to do this? I do, certainly. Mm, I mean, yeah, apart, sure. a, yeah, apart from the fact that I've had this Burns Fellowship for a couple of years, which has been marvelous, um, I wouldn't work anywhere else. I, I think the atmosphere and the whole Feeling in Dunedin is, is marvellous, wonderful for creative work. Jim Taylor is also part of Roy's Complaint, a Dunedin band that was called The Idols. Pull the sheets back from your bed So we can see the pain You generate a senseless now Well your body it's a wet and bleak Thursday night. Roy's Complaint is one of ten bands all under one nightclub roof, all playing original music. Sneaky Feelings is next. The ten bands are playing their music not for money but for a recording. This is the beginnings of Dunedin's first label, Rational Records. It's to capitalise on the wealth of local musical talent. All the bands tonight will be recorded onto a compilation album. It will put many of these otherwise unknown bands into a national perspective. 
is the plan of a part-time student and sax player, 20-year-old Cam Olson. He's using the facilities at Strawberry Sound and he says that the country's music industry has to take him seriously. They haven't really got any choice because it's going to happen and they can either sort of like it or dislike it. I don't really care how they take it. But it's quite serious what we're trying to do and what we want to do and Dunedin is perfect for it and it should be successful just on that. Why is Dunedin perfect for it? Uh, there's a good productive feeling. Um, there are a lot of good musicians here that just are good musicians and, and should be doing things like this, you know, should be recording, should be getting work out. Down here we tend to spend an hour and a half just messing around with a particular cymbal sound if we really want to. There's no one standing over us with the clock and the bank statement saying, boys, you've run out of money, I mean time, I mean money, I mean time. Just keep plodding along until you get what you like, what you like. I think with the, the chills move to England and their, you know, their kaleidoscope world doing so well on the independent charts, and it's funny that in New Zealand, the NME, the New Musical Express, it seems to have more credence than it has anywhere else in the world. And great reviews for the Chills must have done, you know, the Dunedin bands, you know, Flying Nun or, or otherwise, must have done them a huge amount of good. I think good on them, good on them for getting out there and doing it. When everyone else is doing big business deals and stuff, they're just riding on the strength of their music. I like that. Basically, Dunedin's done its work. It's um, infected the rest of New Zealand and hopefully the rest of the world after a while with this approach to music making and um, as the sort of first wave of Dunedin bands die out I would imagine um, its influence as a musical centre will probably do the same because it's all been done you know they've they've had their effect I may be wrong there may be a whole new wave of young Dunedin bands with a whole different approach um, that will sustain the city as a musical force for years to come. In a grubby rehearsal room, one young group is out to prove that Chris Knox will be wrong. Martian Picnic is a group of 16-year-olds. They were playing in pubs when they were just 14, until management discovered their ages. They have original music and they want success. of bands like Martian Picnic is in the hands of Cam Olsen. He's on the road to sell Rational Records and to encourage the continuation of music that's distinctively Dunedin.